My name is Kim Yutani, and I'm the director of programming of the Sundance Film Festival. Welcome to the 2019 festival. Yeah. Uh, you are here to see the film Wolf, The Wolf Hour, which is part of our next section. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with this section, this is a section that is uh, really defined by creativity and in innovation. And I think that this film is a great example of that. Um, this film is set uh, amid a, an exterior crisis, but this film is all about interiors, um, an apartment, and a, a woman's mind. Um, and I think that this film is directed with such great command. Um, this project is very close to us at the Sundance Institute. Um, it was supported by our feature film program and Catalyst. Um, and I personally have been uh, a fan of this filmmaker for many years. Uh, he made a short film called Gage and a feature film called Two Gates of Sleep. Um, and this is the first time he's at Sundance, and I am so thrilled that he's here. Please join me in welcoming the writer and director of The Wolf Hour, Alistair Banks Griffin. I'm going to be sharing the film for the first time here tonight. Uh, like all films, it's a really long road, and, and this film is precisely about that road that a lot of artists have to take. Um, I'd really like to thank Kim Yutani and John Cooper and the entire selection committee for, for programming this. It's an incredible honor. And um, I'd really like to thank the Sundance Institute for, for their undying support of the project. Uh, I feel so honored to have been a part of this temporal hive mind that you guys create here, and it's, uh, it's just such an incredible experience that I've gone through. And, uh, I hope you enjoy the film as much as I do, and um, we'll see you on the other side for Q&A. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Christine Kidnell. I'm Christine Dyla, and I'm part of the programming team, and it's my pleasure to welcome back the screenwriter, the director of this film. Let's give it up for Alistair Banks Griffin. Thank you. Um, I'd really love to bring up uh, our cast, uh, Naomi Watts. Experience, but then I really struggled with what to 
to do next, and I had some projects that came close to, to happening, and they, they didn't, and it was really devastating experience from a career position. And I just kind of found myself like, cutting off a little bit and, and isolating myself a bit, and, I, and, I, and, and finding that to be actually a really interesting experience all in itself. And, and it was another, I think, another part of my profession that I write about this. I moved into a, a really uh, absolutely tiny apartment in Chinatown on the fifth floor of an all Chinese tenor building and, and, and just witnessed a lot of really interesting, um, strange things. And um, the, the, I developed the script here at the lab, so the, the writer's lab, and, and I think that's when a lot of the, the major elements like um, uh, the, the character uh, Kelvin plays Betty came together, and, and then um, I felt really great about going out with the script and, and, and got to the alien and sat down and had the most uh, amazing cup of coffee I've ever had. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 I think immediately I was just felt I was I felt like I got this so so well and I was so put at ease by her and um, we just started kind of having these uh, great conversations at night around your uh, your living room table and we just we just worked through all the emotion and talked about our lives and what it meant to us and what, how we could graph this character onto uh, to to you know, I wanted the audience to kind of feel like you're flying along the film obviously that, that's uh, hopefully what we got. Can you share a little bit as well, Brian, about just like inhabiting having this role and you know just what compelled you and excited you? Yeah, so many things. Um, firstly, reading the script, I just thought, wow, this is um, an exploration of a of a character who's deep in the um, depths of loneliness and um, self loathing and how she's cut off from the rest of the world and how that has become her comfort zone and. Um, she has no way of knowing how to find a way out of it, and it's orchestrated. And, um, and she just made a case for this is where I belong. I, if I stay here, I can't damage myself any anymore or others. And um, and I think a anyone can relate to a certain level of depression and need to isolate. Um, but this was a whole other level, and I think. Um, Anyone that's sort of a creative has a creative mind and or an artist of some kind can definitely imagine a world like that where you feel like you've achieved something in in your world and in your life and and there's that fear of loss of re relevance and um, that's what's happening for June and she um, needs people for whether it's food or money or just loneliness or protection. Um, she calls these people into her world, her world and, and then it's a matter of trust. Who can I trust? Do I trust myself? Am I capable of bringing them down to? Um, and I just, I loved that examination of, of that uh, level of um, craziness. Um, it's a, that's a fun character to play for an actor. And ultimately, I felt like she was just in the way of herself and it took actually tapping into somebody else for her to improve her life. And the question was, um, if, uh, during the writing process, like when did you, did you always know um, how the ending was going to work out, that she was going to come out um, amid this chaos? I'm, I'm blanking on the screenwriting group, but I came over this old man, or one of the greatest screenwriters of all the men on the screen, I'll get off stage and show, but uh, he, he, wrote, he wrote something that I picked up on, was one of the greatest stories you can tell is, is Take someone, put them up in a tree, light the tree on fire, and see how they get out of it. And uh, you know that 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 was kind of where I started from. And so the knowing, I, I really felt like uh, that ending was was I knew I had to get to there, and I wasn't quite sure. And that was a big part of the struggle for me in writing the script. But um, that there, yeah, that was a very early that was a thought. Is that solely for the technological isolation that it provided, or was there? It's really interesting to say that, yeah, right? I mean, like, the this, question, yeah. yeah. The question is, uh, his decision to take place in the 70s. Um, yeah, no, I, that, it, it's, it's a really great question, because obviously this story would be very difficult to make it work with cell phones and, <laughs> and uh, modern tech. So, yeah, that, that was a big part of that went into it. But I, I, I started writing it several years ago, and, and as I started seeing things, you know, happening over the last few years, and, and especially in this country, and, and doing some, some some other things. 
starting to, to fray around the edges of, of the planet, um, that it started permeating its way into the script. And I, and suddenly New York is, is just a period I, I, I would have loved to have lived through, even if it looks like a nightmare. Um, I just find it like to be some of, some of the most amazing creative people in, in uh, art and culture and politics came out of that time. And, and um, so when I was kind of examining whether it to be a contemporary story or not, that was that was a big part of, of making it a little bit removed and, and not not necessarily from um, a contemporary perspective, but trying to show how much things can come back to these, these darker places and, and ultimately um, feel like there's, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. With our time to go through. So the question is uh, about the timeline from uh, shooting to post-production and how long it took uh, considering you know a lot of the um, sort of bigger effects scenes. Yeah, uh, we, we had a pretty tough from the, from the moment Naomi came on. Um, we you know we, think we had to fit the film in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I think that was our our, our goal, and um, so it was like a very specific amount of time, and it was a great challenge because we knew that's what we had, and there was no um, budging on that, and it was it was a I think it put every, put a fire on everybody. Um, so under that parameter, I think we ended up having. Roughly three days of exteriors, and uh, I want to say another uh, 15 days in the, on the set. Okay, there you go. Um, something like that. And, uh, and it, that was a really great thing because we're shooting outside in the middle of winter in New York City. It's not uh, easy. We got this great break in the the three days we shot. It was like, like sub zero a few days before, and we got this like, chunky weather stuff. Um, so we finished around Christmas, and then the post-production process was almost exactly the We finished the film a couple days before Christmas, and uh, it was a really long editing process, and for me, and uh, I think it was worth spending extra time on it because it was just that kind of feeling of you know you, you're trying to really create a rhythm and a, and a um, mood, and, and it, it can, it's a little too fast or a little too slow. You, you uh, just considering you know the, the time time restraints that you had, uh, what was it like uh, working with the actors, whether it was like, you know chronologically how did you get the chemistry like? Um, well, we obviously didn't have enough time for, for rehearsal processes, and, and you know, we had, you know, it was on a, uh, another film that's actually, and uh, while she was doing that film, we were working at night, uh, doing that sort of as a quasi rehearsal process, and we just put together and. And kind of slashing lines out here where they need to go, and so um, the we went into it really feeling like we wanted to stay as chronological as possible until that wasn't possible based on schedules. So you know, you go in and we were, we were casting right up until kind of when we shot. So we didn't really know when that was going to happen, and it happened organically in such a great way because I think like I felt like. All you guys came in and out right at the right time, and almost felt, I mean, even though it wasn't chronological, it did feel like this this perfect energy. It was like right when we were kind of getting like, oh, I feel like someone else needs to be in the room now, and like someone yeah. showed up. And then, right. But it wasn't always like. Is there some cast wanting to come in? I'm experienced. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I shot like a day. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I finished one thing, tried to uh, win. Well, a mustache, <laughs> and then we shot the next week. Uh, someone else to do something else. <laughs> that's it. It was just, it's, it's, it's funny to come to these things because they're you know, a big event around this, but it was just a day. <laughs> we had coffee, we tried on a mustache, we shot. <laughs> I was lucky enough, Naomi was, we were working on a movie together and she told me, she's like, there's a really cool part, I don't know if you about it, but um, <laughs> you should be here. And I read it and then I met with Banks and then I was like, hey man, I was like, we were living in Brooklyn and I was like, hey man, where are you from? He's like, where are I was like, oh, we too, we cool. I was like, Newman. I was like, I was like, oh, what's a Newman? I was like, all right, I guess we're doing this movie now. You like the tape? <laughs> and that was that, so I kind of just worked for like a couple days. I just wanted to tell one quick story. So we did literally come from that other set, and you, we were both playing such extremely different characters, and um, and it was one thing for me to sort of leave that world and 
transformed literally, physically, in every way. And then to see you come and show up to the set, it's like, wow, ah, my God, you know, it was a reminder, like maybe he's going to think I'm looking like I'm faking it. And it was really, it was really scary. And then to see you and to see your look and your voice, everything was so majorly transformed. It was, it was really wonderful. We took a selfie and sent it to Julius, our other director. <laughs> we were like, look, we changed. <laughs> Great having that opportunity, like uh, um, Banks just said, like, you know, it, it, it does get dangerously scary that when you're doing, you know, so much alone and are you, um, is there repetition? What, what, how can we keep this interesting and compelling? And everybody brought so much, you know, we had, each character represented such different things, the friendship, um, the loneliness and the need for protection that goes horribly wrong. And, um, and then, of course, lovely e Emery, yes. who's not here. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, this is eligible for the audience award, so please don't forget to vote. Thank you again. And you'll be